As I researched job openings emerging from the AI takeover, a pattern kept repeating itself. I kept seeing these super optimistic narratives across the board, especially from leaders in the AI space. And while I'm sure some of that is true, let's be honest, if you're currently working in a team and AI makes your team 50% more efficient, unless there's something new for you to do, your team is getting cut in half. Actually, scratch that, it's probably gonna get cut with 60%. Until they realize that they cut too deep, the site is on fire, and they start hiring back the same people again. As contractors, on twice the rate. Just joking. Because that would never happen. I'm Ali Salem. I currently work as a director in a tech company. And on this channel, I help you turn tech and finance into your personal advantage. Let's dive straight into it. There are two paths we're going to explore. The first path is that we double down on AI. These are essentially the roles that are being created by this disruption. The second path is shifting into adjacent industries. These are basically industries that are booming, but have nothing to do with AI. Starting off on the AI-driven jobs, there are basically two ways that you can approach this. Your first option is to stay in your lane and level up. Whereas the second option is to switch lane completely. Let's start with staying on your lane. If you're in a job with high automation risk, don't panic. There is still a way forward. You see, even as repetitive work gets automated, companies will still need a group of subject matter experts to guide, audit, and oversee the system. So why not just become one of them? You will need to upskill in AI automation and take the lead. Be the person who drives the transition rather than reacting to it. Think of it like this. You're a farmer in the Industrial Revolution. Most people feared the tractor, and you went and bought one. And to succeed here, you're gonna need two things. First, you're gonna need exceptional expertise in your field. So you need to be the go-to person. And the second is practical AI literacy, so that you can apply automation and not just read about it. Miss one of those two, and honestly, you'll struggle. But if you have both, you're gonna be indispensable. Now, let's take a look at the other option, which is to switch your lane. And the goal here is to target new roles created by the AI disruption. Now, this isn't theoretical, it's already happening. Companies are hiring for these roles right now, and it's only predicted to grow. Let's take a look at some of the most important AI native roles that are emerging right now. And these will be the ones that you will want to gear up for. Starting off with the prompt engineer. The core function is to design effective prompts for large language models, like ChatGPT, Gemini, or Claude. And if you're watching this channel, this might actually be a great fit for you, since you're likely already comfortable with working with the LLM of your choice. And what's pretty cool about this role is that the low code entry makes it accessible to a wide range of professionals. Moving on to the second role, the AI and machine learning specialist. Now, honestly, this is probably the toughest path, but also one of the most high leverage. And to be clear, we're not only talking about elite roles at OpenAI or Anthropic. This could just as easily mean building automation models in your current company, fine tuning open source tools, or helping a local business use AI to optimize their workflows. And if you're ambitious and ready to make a long-term shift, then this is really where deep work will pay off. As you probably have noticed, basically everyone is FOMOing in on AI right now. And there is a huge shortage of AI and machine learning specialists to cover that need. Shifting gear into the third role, the AI ethicist. Ethicist. Try saying that three times without sounding like a broken chatbot. Look. This might not sound as flashy as a machine learning engineer, but it's gonna become one of the most important roles in the entire ecosystem, and one of the fastest growing ones. The basic idea is to make sure that the AI systems are fair, safe, and compliant. It could be anything from preventing algorithmic bias to aligning models with legal and ethical standards. And as you've probably noticed, new regulations like the EU AI Act or the US AI Executive Order are being rolled out at a very fast pace. And this will of course keep evolving over time. And this is another one with a massive talent gap where very few people can combine all the skills of legal, policy, and technical fluency. And honestly, most companies are struggling to fill it. Now, this is of course not an exhaustive list of all the jobs that are emerging from the AI disruption, but those we just covered are actually already here. Companies are hiring for them right now. And here's an interesting twist. A PwC report found that in AI heavy industries, degrees matter less. Hiring is basically shifting to skills first. And that means that these opportunities are in reach for you even if you don't have a computer science degree, given that you're willing to upskill, of course. And the payoff is real. Workers with AI skills 
earn a 56% wage premium. And wages in the AI industry grows twice as fast as everywhere else. So yeah, AI is creating opportunity. But maybe you're thinking, that's great, Ali, but AI is just not for me. Fair enough. The good news is that there is another path. But before we dive into it, I have a quick favor to ask. If this has been helpful so far, then hit the subscribe. I share videos like this every week, and I would love to have you along for the next one. All right, let's shift gears and look at adjacent markets. We'll break this section down into two categories. We're gonna have white collar roles and blue collar roles. Let's start off on the white collar side. Let's kick things off with the role that has quietly become one of the most important across basically all industries, the product manager. You see, most industries are going through massive complex transformation. We're talking digital overhauls, sustainability targets, global supply chain shifts, and someone needs to make sure that all of them gets delivered. That's where product managers comes in. And here's the thing, AI can't do this. We're not just talking task tracking or Gantt charts. It's about leading people, navigating politics, resolving blockers, and pushing the product forward when it feels like everything is on fire. Next up is the ESG and sustainability specialists. These are roles that moved from niche to non-negotiable. Why? Because regulations are tightening. The EU's CSRD, and the SEC's climate disclosures, and countless of global mandates, are forcing companies to take ESG seriously. And this is not one of those, let's just add another paragraph into our annual report. This is boardroom level priority, with real financial and reputational consequences. And the skill set required? You need to think like a strategist, read like a lawyer, and communicate like a diplomat. You're basically helping companies navigate new rules, measure impact, and align stakeholders across operations. And that's not something an AI can do. Yet. It's a high-trust, interdisciplinary role, and it's growing fast. Last on the white-collar list is supply chain and procurement specialists. This field is basically growing because the last couple of years have been a masterclass in chaos. COVID shutdowns, geopolitical shocks, tariffs, and ESG compliance. This is no longer about just cost optimization. It's about resilience, redundancy, and real-time adaptability. Honestly, procurement teams are kind of like in the spotlight right now. Navigating vendors, rerouting logistics, sourcing ethically, and managing risk at a global scale. And here's why it's AI resistant. AI could analyze supplier data. It could optimize routes, maybe even recommend alternatives. But what it can't do is fly all the way to Vietnam secure a deal, build trust with a local supplier, and navigate a last minute disruption right before launch day. This role basically blends negotiation with crisis management and strategic thinking, and it's become a critical function across industries. Now, shifting gears over to the blue collar roles. Not everyone wants to sit in strategy meetings or stare at a screen the whole day, and that's the beauty of it. You don't have to. Some of the strongest opportunities are actually in the blue collar field. These roles are booming, and they're also some of the hardest to automate away, because most of the AI disruption is happening in the digital space. And yes, I know assembly robots are a thing, but outside of that, blue collar jobs are far safer from AI replacements. Starting off with the first one is the renewable energy technician. Clean energy is booming. Countries are chasing net zero targets, reducing dependency on foreign oil, and investing heavily in solar, wind, and battery infrastructure. That means tens of thousands of new jobs. And that's not happening in 10 years, it's happening right now. Now, the reason why they are AI resistant is because you can't automate away climbing a wind turbine or installing rooftop panels. This is physical, on-site work in complex environments. And AI can, of course, assist, but it cannot replace boots on the ground. Now, the salary range here is around 45 to 85K a year, depending on market, certification, and area of specialization. Moving on to the second role is the skilled tradesperson. These are your electricians, plumbers, HVAC, etc. Now, the reason why this role is growing is massive infrastructure bills, green building upgrades, and aging homes that are driving up demand. 
Add to that a shortage of new tradespeople entering the field, and you've got a serious talent gap. The reason why this role is AI resistant is that you can send ChatGPT into a crawl space to fix a burst pipe, yet. These jobs require hands-on problem solving, physical precision, and trust building with customers. And AI cannot do that. The salary range is 40 to 100K. And honestly, in many regions, master electricians and plumbers can earn well over six figures, especially if they're running their own business. Now the last role on the blue collar side are the healthcare support workers. These will be your home health aid and personal care assistants. Now the reason why these roles are growing is because populations are aging fast, especially across Europe, Japan, and North America, as life expectancy rises and birth rates decline. So the demand for elderly care is skyrocketing. Now the reason why this is AI resistant is because caregiving is deeply human. You're helping people bathe, eat, move, and more importantly, feel seen and heard. No AI or robot can replace empathy and physical presence these jobs require. Now these roles are typically paid lower. The range is around 30 to 55K, but they're in massive demand and can offer deep purpose and long-term job security. So those were the roles. And there are obviously a lot of choices for you to choose from. As always, thank you for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, I think you're gonna love this one. It covers which jobs are at risk and helps you assess how much your job is at risk for AI automation. I will see you in the next one.